It's a musical day in the zone as we meet a world-class violinist and members of a school band. We'll also see how a few household objects are used as musical instruments. There's plenty to hear and plenty to do, so let's get started. It's Friday, the Friday Zone. That's my way to carry. Well, what do you got at the end of the week? It's a big, big world. Let's take a peek. Now we're in the Friday Zone. Welcome into the Friday Zone. I'm Echo, your host. Now, how many of you love listening to music? I know I do. I like all types of music, but as much as I love it, I have no idea how to make it. So I thought we'd meet a few of those music makers today. As you will see, people who play music can be young or old. Most kids learn how music is made while in elementary school, but they don't often get a chance to play. However, things may be different when you get into middle school. Most schools at that age not only teach you how to play, but you actually get to join a band. How cool! Well, I thought we could take a look at the different types of instruments that are played in these school bands. So, let's meet a few of those band members today in the zone. Hey, come on in, have a seat. All right, you guys, I brought your instruments with you. This is awesome. This is Bob Austin, who is the director of the Jackson Creek Middle School Band, and with him are several of the band members and their beautiful instruments. So, Mr. Austin, tell me, what types of instruments are normally found in a middle school band? There's woodwind instruments, flutes, clarinets, saxophones, there's brass instruments, trumpets, trombones, French horns, tubas, and percussion instruments. All right, now I have some questions about those categories, but first, let's go ahead, we'll introduce you guys, and you can tell us a little bit about your instrument, all right? Let's go ahead and start with you. Hey, I'm Sarah. I play the flute, and it is a woodwind instrument. I'm Elizabeth, and I play a woodwind instrument with a reed. Hi, I'm Ho Chen, and this is trumpet, and I, this is brass instrument. Um, hi, I'm Alex, and I play tuba, and it's the lowest instrument found in bands. Uh, my name is Jade, and I'm a percussionist, and I'm going to demonstrate snare drum and crash cymbals. Okay, I heard a lot of different categories there. I heard uh, woodwind, Woodwind with reed, can you kind of like differentiate between these categories? Certainly. The woodwind with the reed would be the saxophone and clarinets, mm -hmm. and the reed itself is a piece of wood that vibrates very quickly that produces the sound. The woodwind without the reed, the flute, it's kind of like blowing across a pop bottle, produces the sound that way. Okay. The brass instruments, they all have mouthpieces where the student places their lips against the mouthpiece and they blow, the lips vibrate, the air vibrates, and the sound comes out. Oh, so you actually have to, you have to move your lips differently with those. Mm -hmm. Yes, you do. And then we have percussion on the very end, which is percussion. drums. Anything you strike. Okay. Oh, wow. Anything you strike. So uh, the stool could be percussion. It here. certainly could. <laughs> okay. So we're going to go through and uh, see how each of these sound different. Great idea. So we're just going to do what? Play some scales? They can do that. Okay. Go ahead and start with the flute. differences in every single one. Could he play the crash cymbals too? Oh, absolutely. He had another thing you hit, a different form of percussion. Absolutely. Yep, these look fun. Well, this is many different ways you can put these together. This is standard for like marsh style crashes. <laughs> like that, or you can scrape it. So 
Bedlam. Loudly. <laughs> my bees. Cool. All right, so each of these is so versatile and so different, but how do they contribute to that overall very harmonious sound of a band? Well, each instrument has its own particular sound, and sometimes you'll hear each instrument playing a melody, or sometimes a supportive role playing a bass part. Usually the tuba does that, but occasionally we'll have all the instruments doing the same thing. Could we play a short little song absolutely, for you? Absolutely, absolutely. Let's try it. You ready? Here we go. One, two, one, two, three, four. Awesome. So that was where everybody was playing the same. Not one instrument was playing the melody, not one was playing the harmony. It was all... All the same. Oh, of course, except for the drums. Uh, the drums, of course. <laughs> so I have a couple of questions. Does anybody feel like talking because I, I do have one. Can I ask you a question? I was wondering how is playing in a school band different from playing by yourself like at home? Well when you're playing by yourself all you can hear is your instrument but when you're playing with the whole band you can hear how your pieces of music and the other instruments pieces of music blend together so harmoniously. That's awesome I bet I bet that is really cool after you've rehearsed and you can get it all down and hear everything together that's pretty neat. So I'm sure a lot of our viewers are going to really want to join a band. So do you have advice for them? There's several different ways you can do that. You can wait until middle school, in seventh grade in this city, and come to the class the first day, and you learn how to play that way. Mm -hmm. You can also take private lessons on your instrument. Mm -hmm. And there are some, some uh, individual bands out there. The Star of Indiana Beginning Band Program is one of them. Wow, so if they have any interest at all, it's a good thing to pursue that. There are a lot of different ways they can do that. Absolutely. Now, I know a lot of kids are going to be thinking, okay, instruments are pretty expensive. How can kids make this affordable? There's lots of ways. You can go to a store and rent an instrument. You can look in the want ads to find something. Ah. You can also come to the school and the schools rent these instruments. And who knows, maybe grandma or aunt has an instrument tucked away in the attic somewhere. That you may not know about. You just never know. So there's no excuse really not to pursue this. Desire to play music. That's right. Well, thank you so much, you guys. You sounded great, and I learned a lot about instruments. Thank you. Well, up next is our community reporter to tell us about some great events happening all around us. Hi, my name is Junior, and this is the Friday Zone Community Calendar. Put on your dancing shoes and swing on over to the John Waldron Art Center in Bloomington this Saturday. Join the Stardusters Swinging Band at 8 as they play lively music from the 1930s and 40s. It's a dance event for the whole family. The Indy 500 has begun. This Saturday at noon is Indiana's largest festival for kids. It's the Bank 1 500 Kids Day with games, prizes, and a rookie run. There's plenty for you to enjoy. Do you want to see an entire middle school and high school band in action? Check out the West Vigo Middle and High School Bands in Terre Haute on Thursday. They're offering a dinner, concert, with great food and music. The fun begins at 5.30. For more information about these and other events, log on to our website at www.fridayzone.org. Not only does our community calendar offer great events and activities for you to enjoy, but I also have a suggestion. It's something I tried a while ago and I loved it. Check this out. You've got to try this. It's probably pretty obvious what we're doing. Now for some of you, like Libby, you've probably fished lots of times. And for some of you, like Jesse, you've either never fished or you fished once a long time ago. Either way, you've got to try this. The first thing you want to do when you go fishing is bait your line. You can bait your line with night crawlers, gmoth, or crickets. And this is the gross part. I hate doing this. How do you know what kind of pole to buy? If you want a good pole, it should be about your size and, and height. And it's okay if it's a little over or a little higher. You guys ready? Yep. Let's go fishing. All right, guys, let's get ready. 
Sometimes it takes a while for the fish to actually come and get their meal. I like fishing because it was just all the fun of catching something and the anticipation. Before I leave today, I hope I can catch a fish. I don't really care how big the fish is, just as long as I catch one. I think I caught something. Reel it in, reel it in. Yeah, did you? Oh, nice. Hey, oh, nice, nice job, nice job Jesse. Jesse. Oh, great catch. I think the kids would li really like fishing if they gave it a try. Um, I think kids should fish because it gives them a chance to get out in nature. You can go with your family or your friends. All right, guys, well, it's about middle of the day. You guys think the fish will stop biting? Probably. We're not having too much luck anymore. You want to go home? Sure. Sure. Let's pack it up. All right, let's go. Mm -hmm. Jesse, you did a great job. Yeah, Jesse, what do you think of your first time fishing? I really liked it. Kids should definitely try this. Despite the fact that I didn't catch anything on that trip, it really was fun. Okay, now it's time to meet our next music maker. I didn't get to talk with him, but some Friday's own kids did. He's a real celebrity, but he still took time to talk with us and to share about his life. Imagine someone who has performed in front of thousands of people all over the world. He won a Grammy Award and has recorded over 28 albums. Sound like someone famous? Well, he is, and he was born right here in Bloomington, Indiana. And we get to meet him, and so can you. So come join us. Joshua Bell is a world-class violinist. He started playing the violin when he was four years old. His parents and his teacher soon realized he was a child prodigy, which means even as a kid, he was a master violinist. In fact, Joshua played with his first orchestra when he was 14, which led to his first recording contract. That was over 20 years ago, and since then, Joshua has performed with nearly every leading symphony orchestra and conductor in the world. Joshua Bell has even been named an Indiana living legend. You started playing the violin when you were four years old. At, by my age, you're already playing better than most professional violinists. Well, I don't know about that, but, <laughs> but, but I, I, yeah, I played okay. I played pretty well. How did it make your life different than most? Well, I feel really, really lucky that I had a violin. My parents, um, who like music, and um, they they gave me a violin very early, and and uh, I liked it very much. It was I was very proud to have my violin and and have this hobby. It was a great hobby. I didn't expect to become a professional and make money from it when I was an adult, but I just loved to play. It was my own thing, and and I did it well. And and uh, but I did other things too. I played sports and, and uh, tennis, basketball. Of course, basketball being. In Indiana, everybody plays basketball. But I was a competitive tennis player, and so I had, did a lot of things. I didn't just practice all the time. What do you think classical music offers to kids that they can't get from pop music? Well, you know, I think it's good to listen to all kinds of music. You know, I listen to pop music and classical music. Classical music is is um, is different. It, it it's it's very it's classical music. I think is beautiful. It it um, it's it's a little bit more challenging. You have to really when you listen to classical music, you have to really participate and get involved. It's not just the music's not just washing over you really loud all the time. Although sometimes classical music can really rock, but but it's um, it's 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 brings out so many emotions. You know, I I get emails from kids, you know, young kids your age, saying how they listen to a piece of music of Beethoven or Bach, and they say it makes them. Uh, really sad or really happy when they hear them, and, and classical music is, can bring out such amazing um, emotions. And I think um, every kid should listen to classical music sometimes. And, and sometimes there's a place for pop or or rap or or salsa. You know, I I think it's all good. It's all good. My parents make me take piano lessons. They make you pay take piano lessons. <laughs> sometimes I don't want to. Why do you think I should stick with it if I don't become a professional pianist? Wow, that's a really, really good question. Um, I'll tell you why. <laughs> I think, well, first of all, I'll bet you do like it sometimes, right? You don't always hate to play the piano. I'm sure you like it sometimes. We don't all like to practice um, all the time. And that's true of me, too. Um, so as long as you're enjoying it sometimes, I think it's really good to keep it going. Because you don't have to become a professional. You can, you can play for fun. And, um, and when you're older, believe me, you're going to be very happy when 
uh, when you can walk into uh, somebody's house if they have a piano, you can say, oh, I'm going to play a little bit here, and they'll, they'll go, wow, you can, play the, you can play the piano. There'll be times where you want to play for friends, for, and sh just for your own enjoyment, you know, and, and that's, you can still be a doctor or be a, a truck driver or anything else, but play piano on, on the side for fun. Do you have any tips for kids who would like to become better musicians? Tips. Practice, practice, practice. Besides that, <laughs> I think it's, um, you know, is. I think make sure you have, I mean, finding a teacher that you get along with and that you like, I think, is very important for parents to, 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 to be involved in that also. I think to be a better musician, you do have to practice, and, and it doesn't mean you have to practice hours and hours a day, but just really focusing, you know, for even if it's a half an hour a day, but and setting a goal, you know, that I'm going to learn this page of music today and I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to get it much better and just concentrating. At the end of the day, if, you've, if you're better, if you feel like you've gotten better, then, you've, then uh, you've accomplished something. What advice do you have for kids about life in general? I think it's really great to get out there and find a passion, find whether it's violin or, or um, dancing or, or whatever, and just really live life to the fullest and do fill your day with, with um, things instead of just just watching TV and playing video games, although I do, I love video games. <laughs> what are you most proud of in terms as your contributions as a musician? The greatest thing about playing music that I feel good about is actually when you play music for people, you actually make them feel good. You know, people enjoy music, they're moved by music, and that's the greatest thing. When someone comes up to me after a concert and say they were just touched, they were, they were moved by the concert. I have a few fun questions to ask. Fun ones, okay. Which Sesame Street character are you most like? <laughs> most like? Hmm. Um, <laughs> it really depends. Uh, if you asked yesterday, I was in a bad mood yesterday. I was overworked, and I was definitely Oscar the Grouch yesterday. <laughs> if you ask my mother <laughs> and my assistant, who was I was grouching things at, a, at them. Um, but usually not. I Sesame Street character, gosh. I don't know. You know, I've been on Sesame Street a couple of times. I've, um, I grew up listening to, watching Sesame Street. And then now, um, twice last year, I, I went uh, on, and that was very exciting, because I grew up, grew up with that stuff. Hey, <laughs> <Telly>. All right. <laughs> Joshua Bell, <laughs> you're OK on that thing. That was fun. <laughs> When you were a kid, what food did your parents force you to eat that you absolutely hated? I don't know if my parents forced me, but they did encourage me to eat my vegetables, which I didn't always, always want to eat. Now I love, love vegetables, and broccoli and, and things like that. What was your favorite subject in school? I'd say of all my favorite subjects, I'd say science. I love science. What totally grosses you out? What grosses me out? Uh, uh, what totally grosses me out? Hmm. Um, I can't think. You know, the, I have a hard time with. Um, I don't think I could be a doctor. I, I was thinking if I couldn't do music, I'd be a scientist, or or study medicine, but not be an actual doctor. We have to cut people open and and blood. I don't I don't like that. I think that would that that would gross me. I'm glad someone's out there to do that sort of job, but it's not not for me. Which is it, Star Wars or Lord of the Rings? I have them. I have. Uh, yeah, I've got them both on, <laughs> on DVD, so it would be hard to choose. Tell us about the piece you'll be playing. The piece I'm going to play right now, I'm going to give you a little sample of um, a piece that was written for me, but also written, it was written for a film, uh, a movie that I did. Um, I did the soundtrack for I did the music for a film called The Red Violin. And uh, it came out about five years ago. And, um, and it was a movie about a violin like this. This is a Stradivarius violin that um, was made almost 300 years ago, and it's worth millions of dollars. It's very, very, very rare and very valuable. Um, and they did a movie about a violin and followed this violin throughout all the different owners, because the violin lives much longer than the owners. And so it's been through all kinds of amazing owners. The music, um, which was written by John Corleano, his music that I played uh, won an Academy Award because it was such uh, uh, good music. So I thought I might play a little bit 
a little bit from the red violin. amazing. I can't believe he's so talented. We've seen a lot of great musical instruments today and how they're played. But did you know the objects found around the home can also be used to play music? We have two people who are going to show us a couple of examples. So let's meet them today in the zone. Hey, you guys, there. come on in. <laughs> Hello. You guys brought your goods with you. Yeah. All right. Well, this is Lauren Robert who plays the washboard. And Claude Ferguson, who plays the spoon. So first of all, Claude, tell me, how did you first learn how to play the spoon? My grandmother taught me in 1933. 1933, that's amazing. These wow. do seem like kind of, you know, old-fashioned kind of instruments. That's but all we had back in the old I, I know, and it's, it's really cool. How did you learn how to play the washboard? I uh, took a trip with my band to New Orleans and mm -hmm. saw them using this, and so I just sort of picked one up and gave it a go. I, I was going to say, where do you... Where do you a washboard. This is the first time I've seen a washboard ever. You can find them in antique stores and in people's garages and they're so around. Do you think that's one of the advantages to maybe playing a household object as opposed to a, one that you can buy in a store, like an instrument you can buy in a store? Absolutely. In it's my case, it'll have to because if you like music, you made it at home. Exactly. And you know, that's, I mean, think about how much money you guys are saving. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> you know, it's like forced creativity. Yeah. So, um, how are these instruments? used to play? Like, I mean, are, are the spoons used as a percussion? They're, they're percussion. Percussion. How about a washboard? This is, is also, also percussion. Percussion. So, um, like, what, what kind of instruments would you be playing with, like, th that would do the melody? Well, I'll let Claude answer first. Well, I play with old-time bands, mm -hmm. uh, fiddles, banjos, guitars, and also the mountain dulcimers, the flat dulcimers. In that case, we use the wooden spoons to play with the dulcimers. Okay, so you can use wooden spoons and metal spoons. Metal with a heavy metal, like the washboard. Okay, and, the and heavy metal. <laughs> banjos and, uh, yeah. and larger groups. Okay. Mountain dulcimers and lap dulcimers, you use the wooden spoons. Just lay it right out of the apple butter and bean soup, I think. <laughs> it still mm -hmm. smells like that. <laughs> can you guys do a quick example of maybe just the sound that your instrument sure. produces? Just a quick little... <coughs> Here's the spoons. Okay. I'm playing two at once, but... And let's hear a little bit of Here's the washboard. Here's the washboard. All right, I can see they're percussion instruments. They're really all about keeping the beat. That's can right. you um, go ahead and play us a little, like, short song? Sure. You okay. come at myself? Uh, we're going to go ahead and roll in some music. So well, that's go good. We'll all right. just get there and we'll wind up and go. All right. Shall Should I be play along too? Or? Um, how let's about we go one at a time stories. and then join in? Great. Yeah? All right. All right, let's hear some. Awesome. Well, 
washboard, maybe? brushes yeah you had another household object well actually yes and there's a there's really no end to the household objects that you can use to play this lots of people play with thimbles um, that you may have seen I people use thimbles on every finger and it sort yeah. of rubs up and down oh, I also cool. when I play with uh, I actually play the opposite kind of music as Claude I play with rock bands and with uh, blues bands and I can use the the things you use to open paint cans that are made of metal those and, and they make okay. yes, heavy metal. Okay. those heavy metal things <laughs> and they make a very powerful sound on this. They do. That thing can be very, very loud. Mm -hmm. And I noticed that you also have um, attached your spoons together here. Does that make well, it easier I, to hold? I cheated when grandmother gave me some. I didn't like to hold them separately like uh, you do normally, but I went out in her tool shed and riveted them together. Those broke, uh, those unfortunately they broke a couple of years ago, but these are that one. Both That's that clever one. to do. Like that, that is very clever. So I'm, I'm yeah, saying. Yeah, I brought you a pair too. All right, well, I'll have to try these out later on. These are, it's really all about creativity, being resourceful, isn't it? It sure is. And yep. you can make music under any circumstance. Yep. All right, well, thank you very much, you guys. This is really cool. I never even knew you could do this kind of stuff. <laughs> well, you're sure welcome. <laughs> We're glad to be here. All right. Pass it on. I, I definitely will. I'm going to learn how to be a spoon expert here. All right. Coming up next is our Spotlight Show. This week, watch a great episode of Clifford. And after the show, I'll see you back here in the zone. The Friday Zone will be right back after this great show. And now, back to the Friday Zone. Welcome back into the Zone. I hope you enjoyed the Spotlight Show. Well, now it's time to sign off for the day, but before I go, I want to thank all of our guests who shared their musical talent. And I also want to thank you for joining me as well. I'll be here next week for more interesting adventures. Until then, remember to enjoy every day, even with the challenges that may come your way. I'll see you next time in the Friday Zone. <laughs>